wake in a cold sweat. Hey, I'm Cece, and I am really, really bad at playing video games, but I love to do it anyways, so I'm going to be playing Cooking Companions. I played the demo for it a couple months ago, and I am so freaking excited to be able to play the full version, so let's do this. Alright, new game. Let's do it. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Do you wish to continue? Let's do it. Oh, hello, Gregor. That walk was brutal, but this cabin is amazing. Full kitchen, running water, it really has everything. Anatoly. Finally, a place I can read a good book in peace. Mariah. I can't wait to... Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. It must be the dust. Girl, I get it. Karen, get those allergies under control, Mariah. Don't worry, guys. I'm sure with a little elbow grease, we can make this cabin shine. That's right, Gregor. So are you volunteering to clean, Gregor? Oh, no. <laughs> Anatoly, not many supplies here. Guess we'll have to go out and get what we need. There's a fireplace for making stew, so let's gather up some firewood, okay? Leave that to me, little guy. Oh. I'll tidy up around the cabin. Need to save Mariah from dying due to this dust. Hey, allergies are nothing to joke about, Karen. Oh, she's not dead yet, Pipsqueak. Calm down. You mean yet? Thanks, Anatoly. I think I'll go foraging outside. With over 450 mosses, 900 fungi, and 70 slime molds, there's bound to be treasure up there. Okay. Roughing it is fun. Anatoly knows so much about edible foods. We're in good hands. I think the slime molds will be the most delicious. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> most certainly not. What about the fungi? Do you even know which ones are poisonous, Anatoly? I, uh, I could figure that out. How are you going to figure that out, man? <laughs> you can be the canary in the coal mine, Anatoly. <laughs> I'm not ending up a corpse here. Keep both eyes open, little guy. Plenty of wolves and brown bears around. They won't be a problem. I read up on 10 different techniques to incapacitate them. Number one is, what's number one? Anatoly. Oh yeah, sorry, Mariah. Got carried away again. I need to know these techniques. I need to know how to get rid of bears. I'll help Anatoly look for food. I'm definitely better at warding off wild animals. If we come up empty-handed, we can always eat some of the food we've brought. Well, at least they brought food. You mean the emergency rations? Why do they only bring emergency rations? Bad idea, chump. Okay, she's kind of rude. Anatoly and Mariah are getting the food. Gregor is gathering the firewood that makes you our designated chef. Me? That's really good because I'm actually really good at cooking. Definitely, definitely a great decision for them. Everyone's looking at you expectantly. All right, well, I hope you like spaghetti and <laughs> cereal, because that is about the extent of my cooking knowledge. Very excited to try your cooking. You shouldn't be. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's go to work while there's still sunlight. Great idea, Gregor. Later. Oh, hi, Karen. Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, the three eggs at the cabin, leaving you and Karen alone. Oh, sub girl. I think Anatoly put the supplies in the kitchen. Thanks for helping out with the cooking. Do you have any experience making meals? No. I'm going to go hard no, but yeah, probably not. I am extremely lazy. I do not cook. <laughs> well, I appreciate your honesty. Hey, you know what? Thanks. Thanks, girl. Let me know if you need help with anything. Thanks, Karen. I'm pretty good with a knife. So far, Karen has been saying a lot of really creepy things. Karen looks pleased with your answer. 
Perhaps this is the beginning of a wonderful relationship? I don't know. Maybe not with Karen. All right, Karen. Oh. Look at that. Making friends already. Anyways, going to check out the living room. Let's talk later. All right, Karen, have fun. Karen heads to the living room and starts dusting a little bit. You decide to look around the kitchen to find the ingredients for the meal tonight. What area do I want to search first? Cupboards, wood pile, drawers. Let's just start from the top, right? First few cupboards are empty. Anatoly must have put the supplies somewhere else, of course. Behind the wood pile, all right. There's nothing but cobwebs back here. Thankfully, no spiders. The drawers, let's check the drawers. You check the drawers on the left. Just some dirty knives. All right, check the cupboards again. Just some mouse turds and cobwebs. Awesome, love that in a cabin. You look at the wood logs closer. This is just a pile of Norway spruce. Ugh. Norway spruce, the worst kind of logs. Everybody knows that. Drawers, check the drawer above the mouse hole. Some kind of mold is growing in this one. Awesome, maybe Karen can eat it. Ha, <laughs> Karen can find it appetizing. Maybe, she's kind of gross. All right, back to the cupboards. Underneath the sink, oh, I found a dead mouse. Awesome. This would be a great gift to give to Karen. Why, why is Karen so weird? You added the dead mouse to your inventory. Great, I'm just gonna carry this dead mouse in my pocket. Check behind the wood pile again. Norway spruce won't burn as hot as logs from an oak tree, see? I know what I'm talking about. Norway spruce, worst kind of log. These would be useless during a snowfall. Mm. The drawers. You check the drawer above the wood pile. Something is making it difficult to open. You pull it open with all your might. Oh. Hey, cabbage. Hi, cabbage. They were in the demo. Chompet, sound off. Never fear, onion is here. Like my cousin Cornbread says, I'll rise to the occasion. <sighs> raspberry, always merry, raspberry. Potato. Cabbage stuffed me into this drawer. I'm pretty sure this counts as kidnapping. He's smiling about it, but... Okay, <laughs> no comments on that, okay. We are the Chompettes, hello. Why talk with those boring humans? All they have to give you is drama. True. Come chat with us instead. We'll share valuable recipes you can cook. Freaking deal, cabbage. We'll share with you our secret Chompette recipes. Collect them all to become a five-star chef. I'm already a five-star chef. So, but like, it's cute, thanks. Celebrate, here's your first recipe card. Roasted eggplant with sesame and pomegranate, meat free. Cool, maybe I'll make it in the game. If you ever wanna talk, just come to the drawer. Chompettes, let's move out. All right, adios chompettes. Cabbage rudely slams the drawer closed. You wonder if what you just saw was real. Oh no. You're slightly worried about what this means for your mental state. <laughs> I didn't know this was the kind of game where food wasn't supposed to talk. I'm a little worried for our mental state as well, but only slightly. I mean, talking food seems like the least of our concerns here, right? Like we have Norway spruce to deal with first. Oh, hi, Karen. Hey. Did you find the supplies? No, I found some talking vegetables. Anatoly lied. He actually put them in the bedroom. Idiot. Here you go. Then why'd you ask me if I found them? If you had them? 
You got the emergency supplies. Awesome. Karen leaves you alone. Thanks, Karen, finally. You start with a fire with some of the wood and get to work on cooking dinner. Tonight's entree, vegetable stew. Am I cooking the chompettes? <laughs> in a large saucepan over medium heat, you heat some water with potatoes, carrots, and celery in it. 15 minutes later, you drain the pan and set the vegetables aside. Placing some butter in the saucepan, you melt it over medium heat. Throwing some chopped onions in, you cook it about 10 minutes. The onions are tender and translucent. Disgusting. Onions are the bane of my existence. You mix in some flour, salt, pepper, and heavy cream into the saucepan, adding the vegetables to the mixture. Hours pass. We're back. More firewood than you'll ever need. Hopefully not Norway spruce. We found some wild sorrel. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a bigger bounty. That's it? Y'all went like the entire freaking day out there. Anatoly's burying the lead. We saw a red deer. Mariah spotted it. Yeah, that's great. Anyways, <laughs> freaking rude. Killed 17 spiders today while you were out looking at deer. That should come as no surprise. There's over 160 species of spiders here. There? 160 in this cabin. Horrifying. Oh. 160? Don't worry, Mariah. I'm sure they're, they were all in the bathroom or something. Why would 160 of them... Oh, you mean all 17. Yikes. No, almost all of them were near the couch. I was going to sleep on the couch. Oh, no. That's where 16 of them were. I'm not sleeping on that couch then. I mean... Hmm. And there's only two beds in the bedroom. Don't sweat it, Mariah. I can sleep anywhere, so I'll sleep in the rocking chair. I'll sleep with one eye open, just in case any of them swarm the couch. <laughs> Thanks, Gregor. I still wouldn't sleep on that couch. Karen and Anatoly, you two take the bedroom. Ooh. Thanks, big guy. Wait, where am I going to sleep? Joke's on you, Gregor. I always planned on taking one of the beds. Hey, Anatoly, I snore louder than a lumber yard. <laughs> Sweet dreams, chump. You turn back to your bubbling vegetables. Wait, where am I going to sleep? All right. This tastes pretty good. It looks pretty good, actually. I'm not going to lie. I did it. I cooked vegetable stew. I am world-class chef. You're welcome, guys. You set the table and ask everyone to dig in. Let's do it. Why is Anatoly staring at me like that? Looks like he's gonna like freaking murder me. What is happening? This smells delicious. Thanks, Gregor. You must be a world-class chef. Absolutely. I think I've already demonstrated this. What do you think, Karen? It's bland as hell. You're bland as hell. Karen, tastes like every other vegetable stew I've ever had. So generic. Okay. I'm in the middle of a cabin. <laughs> All right, I had to cook with Norway spruce. I don't know what else you want from me. Could probably use some meat next time. Gross, maybe that deer. For a side dish, we could bake some bread and utilize the Frigeria Vesca, also known as strawberries for some jam. Why don't you just say strawberries, man? What are you doing? Nobody cares, pipsqueak, okay. Everyone laughs at Karen's polite ribbing. I don't know if that's what I would call it. Nothing makes you happier than cooking a great meal for friends. This could very well be the best day you've ever had. What kind of life am I living if this is the best day? You go to bed stuffed. All right. Day one. I guess full day in the cabin. Hey, you up? I guess so. How'd you sleep? I was so warm last night, I didn't even need a blanket. Um, I don't know where I slept, so I don't... Oh, yikes. What time is it? About one hour until dawn. I'm probably closer to Karen. Yeah, will you two pipe down trying to sleep over here? Gregor, the birds outside aren't making much noise yet. We didn't bring many supplies, remember? Better get a head start on gathering food. 
I honestly can't see the trees outside right now. Gregor, did you see any spiders last night? There was a small one in the bathroom. Actually, I did see a centipede. Oh, no. I can deal with spiders. I cannot deal with centipedes. Absolutely not. Mariah turns a little pale. Girl, same. Karen's messing with you, Mariah. Let's find more than wild sorrel today. If you're a lucky little guy, maybe I'll teach you how to catch some wild brown trout. That wouldn't be bad. What's with you and meat, big guy? Anatoly's herbalism book stated that there's many more species of plants to eat out here. Let's leave the fish alone. You know I'm not uh, into meat. Why'd she say it like that? <laughs> That's a shame. I'd wake up early to go fishing. Cheer up, Karen. We'll get to observe the trout at the very least. Why can't Karen and Gregor go fishing? And the other two can go find plants. I'm a master chef. I can make two meals. Maybe we'll see more red deer today. That sounds like a waste of time, Gregor. Maybe we'll find some blackthorn berries. I love blackthorn berries. Okay. We'll be back later. Can you watch our stuff today? Wait, I don't even get to go? I have nowhere to sleep. I have no permission to go with them. And all I do is cook. Freaking rude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Get out. Don't steal anything. Where am I going to put it? We are all living together in one cabin. Where am I going to store their stuff? Relax. All right, Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, and Karen leave the cabin with a hop to their step. You're alone, but thankfully you have a drawer of chompettes to keep you company. Thank goodness I have my drawer of talking vegetables. All right, what are we checking out today? Talk with the chompettes, check out the bedroom, look around the bathroom, go to the basement. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, say not the basement. Um, checked out the basement and the demo was not a fun place to be, so maybe I'll go talk with my friends, the Chompettes. Hello! Hello! You almost crapped yourself. Because <laughs> I'm a classy bitch. The other Chompettes are somewhere in the basement. Awful. So it's just us today. How about some fun cabbage facts? Okay, I guess we're cabbage facting. Cabbage has 24 calories and 100 grams and is a great source of vitamins K and C. Purple cabbage has even more vitamin C than green cabbage. Maybe you should ask Anatoly why that is when he gets back. Globally, Russia eats the most cabbage. Pretty cool, right? Yep, those are some fun facts. I had a lot of fun. I should have been a scholar instead of a world-class comedian. Since you've been so patient today, I will give you the Chompette's secret recipe for Lebanese-style tabbouleh. Not your normal meal, but I think you'll enjoy it. You're not sure. Okay. Well, my work here is done. Chompettes, mosey out. It's just you today. Can you put me in the drawer? <laughs> I want to surprise the others later. Sure, friend. You're extremely relieved that the cabbage has stopped talking. <laughs> you shut the drawer as per her request. You look over the supplies and start planning your next meal. Alright, what do we got today? What's going on with Gregor? We're back. Knock it off, Mariah. It's pretty rare to be scared of one. It's not. Oh god. Who knew the big guy would be so scared of? Shut up. <laughs> you don't understand. I don't think anyone understands, Gregor. It was just a marmot, Gregor, not a monster. Oh, he's scared of a marmot. Raya laughs so hard that your ears ring. Goodness. Okay. Something's going on with Mariah. That's... That feels like a lot. Tears are rolling down Mariah's cheeks, girl. You need to chill. 
She's laughing so hard that she's about to hyperventilate. Oh my god. Relax. Stop Mariah from hyperventilating? Yes! Let me stop her from hyperventilating. Absolutely not. <laughs> One less mouth to feed, right? Oh my god. Apparently we're just going to gloss right past that. Okay. You don't get it. It's pretty personal. What did a marmot do to you, Gregor? Yeah. I, uh... Gregor looks incredibly uncomfortable. Let's leave him alone. I need to know what this marmot did to him. We found some raspberries and elderberries near the cabin. Quite the selection of berries. Nice job. We also found more wild sorrel. Is this going to be enough for a good meal? I don't know, man. All right, what do we got? Takes you a while, but you decide on your specialty. Cabbage rolls. Cool. You first bring a large pot of water to a boil. You let the cabbage leaves boil for two minutes, straining the pot into the sink. In a medium mixing bowl, you combine some cooked rice, onion, and egg, salt and pepper, along with some tomato sauce. You use your hands to mix thoroughly and decide to wash your hands after it won't come off. Dividing the rice mixture evenly between the cabbage leaves, you then roll them up and tie a string around them so they stay in one piece. You place the cabbage rolls in a large skillet over medium heat, pouring the rest of the tomato mixture over the top. Covering it, you bring it to a boil. Sounds really good, actually. You reduce the heat to low and let the cabbage rolls simmer for about 40 minutes, being sure to baste it with the liquid. Nice. You cooked cabbage rolls. Mariah looks optimistic. Karen looks skeptical, of course. Anatoly looks curious. Gregor looks thrilled. <laughs> Thanks, Gregor. You watch intently as everyone takes the first bite. The Ken with the murder eyes. What is happening? <gasps> That's pretty darn good. You're welcome, Karen. I could eat the whole batch myself. I feel like he would probably eat anything, though. I think the vegetable stew tasted better, but I'm loving how tender the cabbage is. I guess. The sauce is pretty red. Did you use fresh tomatoes for it? Oh, it really adds to it. Spoon some of the liquid on top of it. You'll thank me later. It's just tomato sauce. You can just say tomato sauce. Incredible. It's definitely growing on me. Thanks again for cooking. This really was something special. You're welcome. Everyone leaves the dishes behind for you to do. Top notch. So I don't get to go on adventures picking berries and seeing red deer. And I don't get to have anywhere to sleep. And I have to cook all day for all these people. And I have to do the dishes. Maybe I should have just let her hyperventilate to death. Not happening. Absolutely not. You settle in and go to bed. Everyone goes to bed full. Tomorrow will be another great day. I'm sure it will. Good morning, everyone. That is much too much for the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Gregor? Yeah. No, I am... Mm -mm. Too, too much enthusiasm for first thing in the morning. Absolutely not. Can't you let us sleep in? Not today. Why? Storm clouds are gathering outside. We need to find some food before it begins to downpour. Gregor, you're overreacting. We have enough food to last us a while. Enough food? I thought we used most of the supplies for last night's dinner. He's right. The meal you made was delicious, but it used a lot of what we had. But yeah, like they went out and got like a whole bunch of stuff and I used like none of it. I just used all the emergency rations. Gregor's also correct. Precipitation is unusually high in this area, with many areas being high risk for flooding. It'd be foolish to not go out and look for food today. You really think it will flood? Thankfully, the cabin is on high ground, but that doesn't mean we're safe from floodwaters. Mariah's freaking me out a little bit. Just the, the face. What is this? It's always a possibility, so it can't hurt to be prepared. You're losing it, Gregor. 
Karen. There's nothing to worry about. I mean, what else are you going to do with your day? I think Gregor's right, Karen. It won't hurt to prepare for the worst. I think she's right, Karen. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Anatoly, let's go out and prepare for the storm. Foraging should be a key priority today. There, there are plenty of edible foods and it has better odds than trying to hunt. Give me a few minutes and I'll plot our route on some paper. Let me help, little guy. Anatoly and Gregor head to the bedroom to consult the map. Mariah and Karen are still hanging around. All right. Who am I talking to? Well, I feel like we've already kind of started a relationship with Karen. So maybe we just go talk to Karen. And also, Mariah scares me, but Karen scares me a little more. Because she keeps talking about people dying. So maybe if Karen's on my side, she won't murder me. Hey, Karen, this paper nailed to the wall looks pretty ancient. What were the old days like? I'm not sure what you mean. Extremely brutal. Not as bad as times like these. Well, these times have been pretty good. Probably pretty brutal. Oh, really? You'll have to share the details with me later. Okay. Karen will not be able to stomach your stories. But you still agree you'll tell her the details later. Karen will definitely remember that. What stories? Aw, oh, look at us. Best friends for life. You hear a shout from the other room. Uh-oh. Gregor and Anatoly come back from their meeting. Gregor is blushing slightly. Hey, can you cook something while we're out? What happened? What do you mean? Like, we're just gonna gloss over that? Like, somebody yelled and then Gregor comes out blushing? And we're just like, oh, no, it's fine. What? I mean, I guess. What happened? We have a route. Let's beat those rain clouds. Okay. The group leaves determined as ever. You have the cabin all to yourself. What is that? Sounds like it's coming from the kitchen. Sounds like a radio. It was a radio. Look at me. Genius. What's going on with that radio? You didn't even notice it on the ground when you walked in. Where did it come from? Does somebody leave this radio here? It looks newer than anything you've seen before. Seems to be broken. Better hold on to this. I've got a strange radio now. Things are looking up. Before you cook dinner, what should you check out? We can inspect the kitchen, check out the bedroom, look around the bathroom, or go to the basement. Again, with the basement, it's not happening, not doing it. Maybe we'll go to the bedroom. Is that a bone in the floor? Poor Anatoly. Karen's snoring is so loud, she even wakes you up sometimes. Oh, maybe they yelled because Gregor spilled this ink. Like when they were making the map. Sleuth. Anatoly must be running on fumes. Would he have the courage to wake her up, though? Probably not. Probably not, exactly. <laughs> You wait around for the others to return. Mariah's back early today. Are you okay? The others are still looking for food outside. Anatoly found some more berries, but nothing that will feed all of us. Please don't tell the others, but I'm a little worried about our supplies. Uh-oh. I crunched the numbers, and we don't have enough food, even with rationing, to last if there's a big storm and we get stuck here. Mariah seems disappointed in your inventory management. Okay, I I didn't know. Nobody gave me a choice of what meals to make, okay? Can you try cooking with a little less this evening? Okay, again, was not given a choice here. 
Thank you. You've done such a great job with meals so far. What the fi What is this? What is this? She's freaking me out, man. Like, <laughs> you're very sweet. Is Mariah blushing a little bit? Girl, this is how you flirt with people. <laughs> we need, we, you know, I need to reconsider. Mariah will remember that. Cool. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I need to be friends with Mariah because she is freaking me out and I'm worried that she will murder me. So <laughs> I'm going to be friends with people in the house that I think are murderers and try to increase my odds of survival. Maybe you can teach me to cook sometime. Sure. Looking forward to it. Hey, you could hold cooking classes here someday. Rudely interrupting a tender moment, the others burst into the cabin. Hello, Karen, Anatoly, Gregor. Don't be so down, everyone. We got tons of good berries. We got berries. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Jam is so bland without any sugar. Do you have any sugar? Did we bring sugar? Oh, no, we don't have sugar. Yikes. Turn that frown upside down, Karen. What is this little thing? Is this just a squirrel? Can we eat that? Who knows what tomorrow will bring? I'm not smiling for you, Gregor. You missed out. The sunset was really tremendous on our way back. Oh, well, would have really been nice to been invited along to go see this sunrise, but you know, it's fine. I'll make jam. Hues of orange, red, even a little purple poking out. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors take warning. So we can expect a sailor's delight tomorrow? That's awesome. <laughs> You're such an optimist, big guy. We must have walked a few miles today. Gorgeous sights. You can even see snow on the tips of the mountains. Again, must be nice. That rumble sounded like a dying calf. <laughs> You look from person to person trying to determine who it was. It was definitely Mariah. Uh-oh. Mariah, I'd recognize that sound from anywhere. Guilty. Mariah looks embarrassed, but the group laughs at her honesty. Except for you. You search your mind for something to say, but all you can think of is an old riddle. Those who have it do not want it. Those who have it least succeed. Those who have it for too long perish. When you feed it, it gets smaller. What am I? Hunger. Come on. Dust? Why would it be? What? Try again, big guy. Everyone is pondering the answer. Mariah's face lights up. I got it. Is it hunger? Look at that. Yeah, I was gonna guess that. Sure you were. So uh, what's on the menu tonight, chef? Bread and jam, because you fuckers don't appreciate my cooking, so you get nothing. You crush the berries in your small mortar and pestle, spreading it out on some crusty bread. Look at that. <laughs> you cooked raspberry jam and bread. See this? This is more my speed. This is more my style. I could cook that. The bread's a little tough. Gregor, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. But this homemade jam is to die for. <laughs> no, you're right, Gregor. This bread stinks. Mariah, everybody laughs. You're not sure this could be called a meal, but it got the job done. Everyone thanks you for dinner and heads off to sleep. Like, look, I make delicious meals and you tell me that I can't make delicious meals anymore. So I ration and I make a small little portion and you're mad at me for my small portion. It's like impossible. You go to bed wishing you had more. You have a strange dream. Something is riding on your back and it's becoming a nuisance. Uh-oh. You try to see it in the mirror, but you can't get a good look at it. You try almost everything. 
but it won't get off. The pain between your shoulder blades is getting worse by the minute. You wander away from the cabin, stumbling by a river to soak your pain in cool water. You didn't want things to come to this, but you've exhausted all other options. You swim out to the middle. Rocks on the bottom cut your feet. You slip and fall to your knees. You lean back, trying to submerge the thing underneath the waters. But it won't drown. It won't drown. It won't drown. You splash frantically, plunging your head beneath the water. The current takes you downstream. You try swimming to the shore, but it's no use. Water fills your mouth and nostrils. After a minute, you stop struggling against the current. As you gaze up at the sky, you feel it leaving your back, drifting into the sky as you sink to the bottom. As you take your last gasp, you see what was on your back staring into your eyes. But you don't even have the air in your lungs to scream. You wake in a cold sweat. What was that? That was gross. Ew. It's a goblin? Wake up. Uh oh. Sorry, you were making strange noises in your sleep. Uh, yeah. What's going on, Gregor? Did the lightning wake you up? It woke me up. Tried to fall back asleep, but it's so loud. Let's just get back to sleep and talk about this in the morning. Everyone nods in agreement and gets back to bed. It's a good thing they went out to get food because it ended up raining. Except for you. You can't fall back asleep. You still have goosebumps from the nightmare. I mean, do you blame me? Karen's snoring is louder than a sawmill. You find it very loud and very distracting. You don't sleep a wink. Everyone is now up and awake in the cabin. You hear the front door open and quickly slam shut. Anatoly sounds petrified. Uh-oh. I looked out the door, and we're completely surrounded by floodwaters. Looks like sailors take warning was more appropriate for today. Maybe it'll clear up tomorrow? Maybe. You can't steal big guy's optimism, Karen. <laughs> Why the hell not? That's all he has going for him. Mm, he also has this very nice square head. Look at that. He's also good at chopping wood, though. <laughs> exactly. Knock it off, you two. Mariah, do you think it'll clear up tomorrow? I give it a 27% chance of it clearing up tomorrow. Why exactly 27%? Exactly. Based on what? I was bored stiff, so I read a book on local precipitation levels for the last 20 years in the living room. Sounds like you're stealing Anatoly's thunder. Anatoly, you're a book nerd, right? Why didn't you read it? Couldn't make it past the cover. Is that right? Yes. That bookshelf has some great books on artisan crafting and natural sciences. Why let them sit there gathering dust? How did you arrive at a 27% chance of it clearing up tomorrow? It's easy. Take the time of year, multiply it by a factor of... Marhead begins to explain meteorology to you. <laughs> awesome. She isn't dumbing any of this down. It's similar to... Oh my god. <laughs> so the first thing you need to understand... <laughs> minutes of explanation feel like hours. You look over at Anatoly. He's listening intently to Mariah. So intently, he hasn't blinked yet. You can see his eyes drying up. What is going on with these people? They are so weird. A tear rolls down one of his cheeks. Dude, just blink. This is brutal to watch. Why are you not blinking? Mariah finally wraps up her lecture. She ends with a bow. Nobody claps. Aw. Tough crowd. 
Mariah, that was awe-inspiring. You lost me a few minutes in, but it's okay. I didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> Anatoly turns to you. Anyway, there's no telling how long this will last. We can't leave the cabin until these floodwaters stop. I know our food situation is a little tight, but I know you'll make the right decisions. I believe in you. Thanks, guys. Aw, thanks, Karen. Mariah. Why? Looks like we'll have enough leftover berries for more bread and raspberry jam. I'll pass on the jam. Just give me more crusty bread. I thought you didn't like the bread. Everyone laughs except me. Yeah, because I'm like, tired of your shenanigans, man. With everyone stranded in the cabin, you need to keep everyone fed and happy. You sneak out to the kitchen while everyone's still talking. What do we got? You get out some crusty bread and get to work making some more jam. With the kitchen to yourself, you decide to check in on the chompettes. Let's do it. Hello, friends. Hello! Hello! Don't worry, as leader of the chompettes, I'll make sure none of the humans know about us. That big guy would try eating me like an apple, so definitely don't tell him about us. Are your plans going awry? <sighs> no. Got another cornbread classic for you. Did you hear about the bread maker's bakery burning down? No. Her business is now toast. <sighs> Maybe we can eat this bread. That one's been done to death. Do you know how raspberry and milk were introduced? You tell her no. Raspberry, raspberry milk, shake. You let out an audible groan. Actually, yes. <laughs> Did cornbread teach you that one? Nope, wasting an entire day thinking about that terrible pun. Well, at least you recognize that it's awful. It was well worth the time and effort, Raspberry. Maybe you'll win the annual Chumpet Comedy Competition this year. Raspberry. Of course. Yes. Not while I'm here. Yeah. I won't choke on stage this year. Isn't that every year, Brad? Aw. <laughs> we still talk about that closing line, Brad. You're going to do great this year. Anyways, don't even think about eating us if you're hungry. I mean... Chumpets stick together through thick and thin. Rain or shine. Feast and famine. Potato, I swear to God, repeat the line or we're locking you up again. Locking you up again? Oh my God. Life or death? I thought it was the humans that would give me drama. But it's just everyone in this freaking cabin. You're all drama. That's right. Chompettes, move out. Out. Chompettes. The chompettes somehow manage to close the drawer on themselves. You bring the crusty bread and jam into the living room. Karen interrupts you as you bring in the food. Took you long enough. Rude. Karen looks at the two slices of bread left and the mason jar of raspberry jam. There's mold on these last two slices of bread. Pick it off. You'll be fine. Karen is right. What the hell is the matter with you? You grip the knife tightly in your hand. Honestly, I will stab you in the face. You think this is enough for five of us? You told me to ration, okay? I didn't ration, and you got mad at me. I'm rationing, you're mad at me. Maybe I'll cook you for dinner. We can't throw this bread away. No, it's all we have left. Yeah, you gotta eat it. Gregor's right. Anatoly, will mold spores give us food poisoning? I'm a uh, no scientist. Sorry. Hmm. Let's pick off as much mold as we can. We can't leave with the flood water, so this will have to last us another day. Everyone grimly nods, ripping apart their piece like a pack of wolves. Gregor seems to unhinge his jaw and eat it in one bite. My guy. He looks like a duck eating bread. So which is it? Is he like, or is he like a duck where you're like, 
Those are two completely different things. Yeah, you're welcome, Mariah. Bread and jam isn't much of a meal, but it's more than we had when we left Ukraine. Plenty of wa rainwater outside, so at least we won't die of dehydration. But until the storm is over, nobody should leave the cabin. Should clear up if we just give it a chance. Anatoly, where are you getting that information from? One of the books on the bookshelf about the climate here. Hmm, you're illiterate, so that definitely is a lie. Is he illiterate? I've seen him reading. Little guy's been studying. I'm serious. He pretends to read those books because he wants us to think that he's smart. But I can tell he's just staring at the page, faking it. What? What do you think? Me? Why? Why do I have to chime in on this? Anatoly doesn't know his weather conditions from a hole in the ground. Karen is correct. Anatoly could read, I saw it with my own two eyes. Okay. Look. Look at Karen's face. <laughs> of the two of them. Karen will probably stab me a lot faster than Anatoly would stab me. So I feel like I need to play it safe and be an asshole and side with Karen. I'm sorry, Anatoly. <laughs> sorry. You're funny. I didn't feel funny. It felt bad. It feels bad. Sorry. Keep pretending with those books, Anatoly. Brutal, Karen. I found an old picture book in the living room, Anatoly. Okay, you can stop. Like, you don't have to continue being rude. Let me know if you want it, small fry. Karen? Karen smiles at you. No, I do not condone this behavior. I just don't want her to kill me. Okay. I guess let's call it a day. Yeah. Let's call it a day. Go to bed. Everyone shuffles off to their sleeping areas. Six minutes later. I'm glad you called out Anatoly's bluff. You continue to impress. It's a shame Anatoly is sleeping in the same bedroom. I should have never let him be the one to share with me. Okay. You're an asshole. So I probably wouldn't. Maybe I would. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe I could look past it. <laughs> what if it was just me and you? Ooh, I'm sure we could study and squeeze a few novels in before bed. Sure. That's what we'll be squeezing. Well, we'll have to see if we can kick him out at some point, right? Oh, you'll have to tell me about that anatomization book on the bookshelf. Really cool pictures in there. So I looked it up. Anatomization means to cut in pieces in order to display or examine the structure and use of the parts. There's some really cool pictures of uh, dismembered animals laid out in a picture. Cool. Karen looks like she has a crush on you. Let me know if you're ever free for a lesson. Is she gonna teach me how to dismember animals? Like, I'm feeling a lot better about my decision to be friends with Karen. <laughs> Karen walks away looking very happy. Thanks, Karen. You are definitely sure Karen will remember that. Just saving my own skin at this point. <laughs> you get ready for bed and put a blanket on. You go to sleep very hungry. You don't dream the entire night, but you sleep through everyone waking up. And that's how fast a deer could run if startled. Whoa, incredible, impressive. I wish we had a deer here with the food getting lower. Let's just skip today's meal. No. It's only for one day. Various cultures and religions have practiced fasting throughout history. I mean, yeah, one day wouldn't kill you. 
That doesn't make us feel any better, Anatoly. What options do we have? Our food wasn't rationed properly. Okay, again. I didn't know I was being left in charge of the rationing, okay? Anatoly leaves mumbling to himself. So passive aggressive of him. Honestly, though, like anybody else could have had that job. And they didn't tell me and whatever. Starve. <laughs> Everyone goes to a separate area. Karen in the bedroom. Gregor in the living room, Mariah in the kitchen, and Anatoly in the bathroom. Who do you want to speak to? I feel like, okay, so I feel like we're pretty strong with Karen. So I think the other person that we probably should focus on is Mariah because she scares me <laughs> and I feel like she's going to snap and eat my face. So maybe we need to be friends with Mariah and Karen. So I'm going to go talk to Mariah. Oh, shit. Oh, didn't hear you coming. I was just double checking if there was any food we might have missed. But I couldn't get the drawer open. Could you give it a try? Oh, what if the chompettes are in there? Great. While you go do that, I'm going to get some more reading done. You think Mariah will remember that? She wouldn't want to stick around to make sure that I actually opened the drawer? Like, what if I was hiding all of the food in there? See you later, Mariah. You give the drawer a hard yank open. Hello! Hello! Is the thunderstorm keeping you up at night? You just need to roll with it. Raspberry whispers so quietly you lean over to listen to her. We need to talk soon. Please listen to me when the time comes. Anyways. Okay, Raspberry. Something's, uh, something's going on with these guys. The humans are not the only creepy ones. Everybody is freaking me out. Anyways. Please don't let the others see us. That's right, Raspberry. Part of being a chompette is secrecy. <laughs> Wouldn't want those humans to overhear our meetings, now would we? You shake your head. I guess not. Good. Chompettes, roll on out. You shut the drawer. Everyone looks pretty down this evening. Wish the rain would just stop. You're all doing great. We must be almost to the end of this nightmare. Oh, poor Gregor. He looks sad. I'm so hungry. Me too. You are too. You wish everyone a good night and get ready for bed. You go to bed with a growling stomach. Oh, oh no. Here's Raspberry. Wake up. I said, wake up. Oh, hi, Raspberry. The rainfall is nonstop again. Did you have anything to do with this? Now I control the weather? You don't answer her question. Always thinking with your stomach, right? You should reconsider might save what little humanity you have left. Reconsider what? What is happening? At least I tried. I won't have a guilty conscience by the end of this. Go back to sleep, monster. What did I do? I didn't cause it to rain. Right? You easily forget about Raspberry's conversation. Yeah, screw you, Raspberry. You have a strange dream. Great. A boy is yelling at you in the kitchen. You keep telling him to lie down on the tray, but he keeps shaking his head, calling you names. So you do it. You lie down on the tray and make your body as flat as a board. You show him how it's done. His anger turns to courage, and he pushes you into the oven. As the stench of burning hair fills your lungs, you see him sneering back at you. You wake in a cold sweat. Did he cook me? 
was I trying to cook him? And then he tricked me? And then Hansel and Gretel'd me into the oven? I hated that. <laughs> Everyone seems to be sleeping in later than normal. Their stomachs must have kept them awake all night. The rain is still pouring outside. You can barely make out the trees from the windows. Not good. You hear a stirring of blankets, arms, and legs. Mariah looks petrified. Yeah, she does. I couldn't sleep. Anatoly has bags under his eyes. The storm is too loud. Karen looks out of it. Oh, she does. She's looking a little she's looking a little rough. The cabin was creaking so much last night. It sounded alive. Yikes. Gregor looks a little gaunt. I got a good look out the window. And couldn't see anything due to the rain. Great observation, Gregor. Thank you, Gregor. I was so hungry last night. I kept pacing around my bed. Karen turns to you. When is this going to end? Again, I don't, I don't know why they think I have the answers here. Like, I cannot control the rain. <laughs> I checked outside the door again. Floodwaters keep rising. Unfortunately, we're gonna need to stay put unless one of us wants to drown in rainwater. As soon as the weather lets up, we'll be able to scavenge for supplies. How close is the nearest town? I don't know. Didn't you have a map on you? I think I dropped it while we were running after Gregor. Oh shit. I'm sure it'll show up eventually. How? It is, even if it does manage to like float to this cabin, it's going to be like blank. All of the ink will be off of it. Mariah and Anatoly go white as a sheet. How are we going to find our way back now, girl? We'll have to ride out the storm. Mariah looks at you. We're down to our last slice of bread. I don't know how much longer we can put off eating. The group stares at you. Why, again, why is this my decision? Who made me the leader? It will clear up in no time. Maybe you're right. The group looks worried. They all gravitate to an area. You can tell Gregor's putting on a fake optimism and Mariah is having trouble. Which one do you want to speak with today? Let's, let's keep going with Mariah. She's having trouble. I need her to be my friend so she doesn't uh, eat me. <laughs> Again, with the face, dude. It's cold as hell over here. I'm surprised Gregor isn't freezing to death at night. How does he do it? You explain to Mariah how the size of a person and fat content determines how warm they are naturally. Wish I was as big as Gregor. But to be honest, I don't need to be that tall to make a difference in the world. Do you know what he wanted to do for a career? Mariah does her best Gregor impression. Split firewood and gaze at the stars. That sounds like a great career. How boring is that? That sounds amazing. Just split firewood all day and then look at stars? I would do that as a career. Depends on the person, but pretty boring. You're so funny. Thanks for coming in and chatting with me. Mariah blushes a little. Aw. You make it easier to pass the time. Aw. See me and Mariah, that could work. As long as she doesn't <laughs> try to eat me, <laughs> I can make this work. You got it, girl. You're pretty sure Mariah will remember that. Please, please remember that I am nice to you. <laughs> you thank her and leave the bedroom. You call everyone together. They all look grim. Me too. You, cut, you could cut the tension in the room with a knife. 
Everyone is staring at you. They're expecting that last piece of bread for dinner. You bring it out. Everyone cannot take their eyes off of it. You instruct everyone to take a pinch. And slowly, all five of you tear it apart like a wishbone. Everyone studies their piece of bread carefully, wondering how long it will last. Karen is the first to eat hers. She chews each bite a few hundred times before swallowing. Anatoly chews it cautiously, opening his mouth once he finishes each bite. Mariah nibbles on it silently, eyes wide, moving from person to person. And Gregor? He just one bites it, doesn't he? Gregor just pops it in his mouth like a cherry. Sounds about right. It was gone in an instant. The group thanks you awkwardly. It's not much, but you've run out of options. You wish everyone good night and get ready for bed. You go to bed starving. It's not looking too good for us here in this cabin. Why didn't they bring more food? Like, did they just expect to be able to live off the land the whole time? Like, why, why did they bring like nothing? Good morning. Morning. Let me check if the rain has stopped. I'm gonna go with no. It's still flooding, yeah. What are we going to do? I don't know, dude. Humans can live about two to three weeks without food. Water isn't a concern. Rainfall should end in a day or two, right? Actually, uh-oh. Precipitation can occur more than 215 days a year here. It's a little more than two weeks. But do you really think that it will rain that long? Anatoly, it's been days already. What makes you think it'll stop soon? Relax, everyone. Let's see how long we can ride this out. Fingers crossed it's done by tomorrow. Panic is slowly creeping in. Everyone's looking scared. But you need to survive. Karen and Gregor begin to discuss next options. Do you want to speak with Mariah in the kitchen? Or Anatoly in the living room? Think instead about everything you've done wrong and how you've doomed everyone. Okay, let, let's not dwell on the past, okay? Like, we need to move forward. Let's go talk to our girl. Oh, hey. Mariah looks relieved to see you. All right. That's all I gotta do. So, how are you holding up? Not very good. Better question, how are you holding up? Not very good. That's very sweet of you to ask. Mariah's looking at you intently. Oh no. She gets a little closer to you. Oh god. I noticed you didn't use any meat when cooking. Is that a bad thing? I thought you didn't like meat. Usually I have to pick it out of the foods the others make. But you respected that. Okay. That was a really <laughs> abrasive way of starting this conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Mariah is looking at you with admiration. I need to speak with Gregor for a minute, but thanks again. You're welcome. You're definitely sure Mariah will remember that. Awesome. Look at that. We are BFFs. Now she's definitely not going to eat me. <laughs> you decide to check out the drawer again. All right, Chompettes, where you at? Oh, it's just Potato. You ask Potato where the others are. What is this music? They'll be back. They wanted to explore the labyrinth of tunnels around the cabin. Surely you've seen the mouse holes, right? 
They connect all over the cabin. Must have been some mouse that created them. Or something worse. Anyways, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Things are going to get worse from here on out. You have a feeling Potato is telling the truth. You realize some drool is leaking out of your mouth. Disgusting. Don't even try to eat me. You'd just get deathly sick if you tried. And from the look of you, you need to retain all the water you can. From rationing to cooking, you've failed every common sense measure for basic survival this week. Potatoes rude as shit. You knew something like this would happen, right? Why would I have known this? Never mind. With floodwaters rising and no food now, I think it'd be a great time to go over the fundamentals of starvation with you. When experiencing starvation, there are four factors that will determine if you live or die. Age, height, weight, and your degree of activity or inactivity. You've been especially lazy, so I think you'll survive a little longer than the others. How am I especially lazy? Everybody else is just chilling. The Harris-Benedict equation can help you figure out how many calories you need to simply maintain your current weight. The equation produces a number called the basal metabolic rate, or BMR. Stay with me here. BMR equals 655 plus 4.35 times weight in pounds plus 4.7 times height in inches minus 4.7 times age in years. Got it? For fun, let's try it out on someone here, Mariah, using Harris Benedict. She looks like she's 120 pounds, about 5 feet 5 inches tall, about 20 years old. Hmm. Crunching the numbers. I think she needs about 1,388 calories daily. But that's being abnormally stationary. She'd have to lay in bed all day and night, just eating, breathing, and using her brain. Not very common when you're starving to death. People tend to get up more. If she was being very active, let's say swimming through floodwaters, why would she be swimming through the floodwaters? We need to multiply that 1,388 calories by 1.9. So now she needs 2,638 calories per day. That's quite the difference, especially if you didn't ration the food properly. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. Which you didn't. No, I didn't. I guess that wraps up our first survival lesson. Hopefully, we'll never have to speak again. <laughs> Freaking rude! Okay, potato, bye! You shut the drawer, going over the numbers again. I don't think any of us can take this much longer. Gregor's voice starts to crack. I don't want to ask this, but it's time. One of us needs to go outside and search for food. Everyone is silent. I'll go. Uh-oh. Mariah, no. I used to swim all the time near my house. She's actually going to go sw swim in the floodwaters? So I probably have the best chance of swimming through the floodwaters. No. What? Yeah, no. Let me go instead. Can you swim? You won't get very far if anything happens to your glasses, Anatoly. Mm, that's true. You're blind as a mole rat, remember? That's true, but... Little guy, let me go. Gregor, I... Sounds good to me. Well, of course it sounds good to Karen. Karen? His arms are definitely the longest, so he'd probably be the best at climbing trees out of all of us. No, that wouldn't be right. Gregor, let me go instead. I get that none of these options are good ones, but we need to find food or help. Gregor grabs a branch from the woodpile. He cuts it into different measurements. Since we can't come to a consensus, let's draw for it. We'll each pick one from my hand, and the shortest will go outside to search for food. You're not worried about drawing? Why not? You saw Gregor cut the branch lengths. So you can tell which is the biggest one of the bunch. So I'm a cheater. I'm a dirty little cheater. No wonder everybody's mad at me. You pick it. Of course I did. Wow. Everybody has a right to be mad at me, apparently. I'm just a giant dickhead. 
You watch the others intently. Will it be Gregor? Anatoly? Karen? Will it be... Looks like I've got the shortest. Oh no! How did the potato know that she was going to go out in the floodwaters? It was left up to chance. Mariah? It's okay. Girl. I watched Anatoly forage earlier, so I'll know what to look out for. Just swim until you find higher ground, then scout the area. Maybe you'll find a fish out there. Everyone looks heartbroken. Karen, Anatoly, and Gregor. I'll keep us alive. Not me, though. Again, just not me. Everyone else. I promise. That's why I drew the biggest one, because I knew that I would have to look out for myself, because they don't care about me, obviously. She promised. Everyone watches as Mariah leaves the cabin. The silence is deafening. Goodbye. Adios, Mariah. The door shuts behind her. You can faintly hear her yell about how cold the water is. And then silence. Mariah has left the cabin. I'm sure we'll see her again. The rest of the group nods. Yeah, for sure. She'll be okay. Everyone stays up waiting and waiting. The sun has completely set. Oh no, so she's out there in the dark. One by one, each person quietly shuffles off to bed. She's like out in the floodwaters at night. That's not looking very good for her. You get ready for bed and easily pass out. Why? I'm not even a little bit worried for my best friend, Mariah. Like, dang. You have a strange dream. 